class started module two last time. We talked about the Lewis structure, geometry, uh, polarity. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the so-called bonding theories. Okay. So if we're going to look at these uh, bonding theories, we can go on how we look at H2 and F2. So H2, usually, Lewis structure look like this, F2 would look like this. So what's the common thing among them? Anong common sa kanila? They both have, anyone? Single bonds. Okay, they have both single bond. But if you're going to look at their property, okay, even though they have single bond, the bond length that they have is different. The bond enthalpy that they have is also different. So it has something to do with the orbitals that are overlap. So for the H2, it's just a 2,1s orbital. And for the F2, it's a 2,2p orbital. So you have a single bond of both H2 and F2, uh, same way, but based on, uh, they have two uh, what we call different bond length and bond enthalpy, okay? The Lewis structure cannot explain uh, this. So for a more complete explanation, we look to the so-called quantum mechanics and out of this, there are two theories that they develop that look at the electronic structure of the molecules. And one of them is BBT. Where in BBT, the bonds are formed by sharing of the electron from overlapping atomic orbitals. So in H2 is the 1s uh, overlapping. And in F2 is the 2p overlapping. So we could say, if you're going to read the handout that you have, so valence bond theory, this is a quantum mechanical model that used to describe the electronic structure of the covalent bond. Basically answers the question, how does covalent bond form from the sharing of the electron? So you know which structure is just telling us they have both single bond, but it cannot describe why they have different bond length and different bond properties. So in valence by a Bond theory, it assumes that electron is a molecule in a molecule, okay? What happened is the atomic orbitals of these uh, individual molecules is being what we could share. Okay, so B, uh, BBT assumes that electron in a molecule occupies atomic orbitals of the atomic, of the individual atoms. So the way that they look at it, whenever they form a bond, it is one that has the lowest energy. So for instance, this is what? H2. So how do they determine the bond length that is equals to 74 PM? So what they do is they try to look at the energy as they adjust the distance between two hydrogen atoms. And they found out at 74 picometer, that's the one that shows the lowest energy level. So that's the one that there's an attraction between the proton of one hydrogen and the electron of its neighboring hydrogen atom. Electron, electron, what happened? sila. So they, they have to have a, 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 some sort of a distance that this attraction that is enough. If it's too close, you see the energy is too high because there's repulsion. If it's too far, wala silang attraction, walang energy na, na what we call the observed. So as the two hydrogen atoms approach each other, the 1s orbitals begin to interact and each electron begins to feel the attraction of the other proton. So gradually, the electron, okay, a density builds up in the region between the two nuclei. 
Okay, so you could see that the two nuclei that you have there group out. Kita nyo. Okay, and eventually a stable uh, hydrogen molecule is formed when the distance is around 74 picometer. Okay, now BPT, we could say it, it gives a clearer picture of the chemical bond formation. Okay compared to the Lewis structure or Lewis theory. So the BBT states that a stable uh, molecule forms from reacting atoms when the potential energy of the system has decreased with the minimum, okay? So for instance, nitrogen reacting with what we call hydrogen to give you ammonia. So how does the covalent bond formation form? So as you're going to look at this, you have a 2P3 here, and then you have what? 1S1. So if you're going to look at here, you have three orbitals that is unpaired, and you have here one S or an S orbital that is unpaired. So all you need to do is, mix it or add it to that one, and you form what we call bond formation or covalent bond formation between nitrogen and hydrogen. So if the bonds form from the overlap of three 2p orbitals on nitrogen with the 1s orbital on each hydrogen atom, what would be the geometry of ammonia looks like? So these are the three 2p orbitals. Okay, so what happened, you mix them, okay? So you predict what, 90 degree angle, and if you're going to look at, you have here 107.3. But it's not as easy as that, okay? Whenever we talk about BBT, there's always what we call the concept of hybridization. So when we're talking about hybridization, it's the mixing of the electron, okay? It's not only the p orbital that participate here. It's usually involves also the s orbital, okay? So whenever we have hybridization, what we have here is the mixing of two or more atomic orbitals to form a new set of orbitals. So the way that you're going to look at here, you mix at least two non-equivalent atomic orbitals like an s and a p orbital or, or even a d orbital. So you form them a hybrid orbital that have very different shape from the original atomic orbitals. Usually it's a combination of the orbitals that you mix, okay? So this is, the, the hybridization is not really part of module two, but instead it's part of what? Module three. Kaya nga tatapusin natin lahat, both module two and module three today. Okay, this is already part of module three, but it's still under, the valence bond theory. So when you form the hybrid orbitals, this is equal to the number of the four or, or atomic orbitals that you use in the hybridization. So if it's 1s, 3p, so you have sp3. Okay. If it's 1s and 2p orbitals, it's sp2. If it's 1s and 1p, it's sp. And Covalent bonds are formed when there's an overlap of hybrid orbitals with atomic orbitals and the overlap of hybrid orbitals with other hybrid orbitals, okay? So let's see. So this is the formation of what? sp3 orbitals. So sp3 orbitals, you mix one s orbital with three p orbitals and you hybridize it and this is what you form. There are three equivalent sp3 orbitals. Now, if you're going to look at the energy level, usually like ganito yan, di ba? Okay. Now, we could put it like this one. So the energy level that you have is around here. So magmimix yung tat tatlong p orbital tsaka isang one orbital. And at the same time, any electron that we have, it will be promoted, okay? Now, how do we 
see the formation of this sp3 orbital let's say this is what we call methanol so you have here not methanol methane okay so you have a c and an h so what is the electron configuration of carbon you have what one is two two is two two p2 and this is one s one one s one so we could put in the carbon you have a two s and a two p so how many atoms do you have here how many electrons do you have here you have a one two and you have here like this one right follow Hello. You still follow me? Yes, for sir. Okay. Okay. So what happened? We mix them. So how many orbitals do we form? So one, two, three from the P orbital and this one. So we call this now sp3 so what will happen we're going to promote one of the orbital uh, one of the electrons here so each of them will now have one unpaired electron for each of the sp3 orbital and that's represent the blue okay so what happened here so you have a 1s so it's on 1s it's on 1s it's on 1s it's on 1s so you form that one so it's a mix or an overlap or hybrid orbital, which is sp3n, an atomic orbital, which is 1s. And here you could say your carbon is in sp3 hybridization. Now, how about nitrogen? What's the electron configuration of nitrogen? So that we can see what's the hybridization of nitrogen here. Anyone? 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So we could say, okay, I have a 2p and I have a 2s. Maybe I'll make it like. And then I can put it like this. What do I do? I'm going to promote and hybridize them. So I will form. So when I form the sp3, paano yung distribution ng electrons dito? So meron na akong dalawa dito, tapos meron na akong tig-isa. So what, what does it mean? How many orbitals can I have that can share with uh, another orbital that has unpaired electron? No. Three. So this could be represented by one, two, three. Now, where do I can find this already filled up or paired electron? Yan yung unpaired electron or yung tinatawag natin, lone pair. Follow? So nitrogen here is also in sp3 kasi meron kang apat. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, sp3 is has what we call uh, four uh, orbitals of which one is lone pair and the other three is what we call bonding pairs. How about water? So ano ano yan oxygen right? So ano yan na oxygen one s two two s two two p ano four po. Four. So if you're going to do that, again, meron kang ganito, 2P, 2S. So meron kang ganyan, ngayon, dito. So if you're going to make it SP3, what will happen? You have this, you have this, and you have So ilan lang yung available for uh, pairing with an unpaired electron? 
Dalawa, di ba? So, ito. Yung loan pair. Tapos ito. Yung isa pang loan pair. And again, your, your oxygen here has an sp3 hybridization. Claro pa so far? sp3, 1 plus 3 is 4. So you have 4 orbitals of which 2 are already paired and that's your lone paired and 2 available for bonding pair with hydrogen. Clear? Oh my God. <laughs> Now, remember in the in what we call sp3 hybrid hybridized uh, nitrogen atom in our NH3. So, sabi to on meron kang 107 point. What's that? Bond angle of 107.3. But what's usually the bond angle if you have a tetrahedral? Tetrahedral we have 19.5. Why is the bond angle of ammonia less than, let's say, methane bond angle? Anyone? Hmm? So it has something to do with the lone pair. So the process of the lone pair there, so you have available uh, electron that can repel. Okay? Those that are in the bonding pairs and decreases the bond angle. Yun yung main reason. Okay? Now, what are the other hybridization? Let's say SP. SP looks on the mixing of 1S orbital and 1,2P orbital. Okay, and if you're going to mix it, this is what form. So, ano example na meron tayo dyan? Meron tayong BECL2. And if you're going to look at BE, again, what's the electron configuration? One S2, two S2. One S2, two S2. Two S2. Two S2. 2s2. So if you're going to look at it, can you turn that? No. And if you're going to hybridize this, ano mga yari? So we'll only have like that. Okay. So wala nga available dito. So, ilang orbitals lang yung involved to form a bonding pair? You only have two. The other two, none. It won't exist. It's not a non-bonding pair. So, you only have two bonding pairs and that's what here and here. So, you have an SP so it's, it's this one that's SP. And you're going to form a bonding pair with the chlorine. Okay? So sa SP, dalawa lang yung bonding pair mo. Wala ka non-bonding pair. Okay? Now, how about kapag tatlo yung orbitals mo or yung hybrid orbitals mo, a mixture of 1S and 2P orbitals. So you have an SP2. And you have a hybridization like this one. And if you're going to look at this, classic example that we have here is BF3. So, if it's a bean, yung boron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, right? Tama ba? So, if you have 2p and 2s, so you have how many here? One. So if you're going to promote there and mix them, 
ilang orbital lang yung pwedeng i-involve or pwedeng i-pair? Tatlo. Tatlo. So that means that's an sp2, hindi ano to. So that boron form one here, one here, and one here. Okay? Now, what we talked so far is how the hybridization can be related to geometry. So if we're going to summarize what we have, okay, we can determine the hybridization and at the same time, the geometry, the hybridization of the central atom and the geometry or shape that would form. So we can draw the Lewis structure of the molecule, and then we count the lone pairs and the number pairs bonded to the central atom. And depending on the total number of the lone pairs and the bonding pair, that is also the total number of your hybrid orbital. So for instance, kapag meron kang dalawa, yung hybridization mo is just made up of sp. And if you have an sp, usually your shape is linear. Okay? Now, if you have you can have an sp2. Now, in your sp2, okay, if all of them are bonding pairs, you have trigonal planar. If one of them is a lone pair and two of them is a bonding pair, then you have a bent. So depending on shape doon, sa natutunan nyo noon. But the hybridization is sp3, representing the three bonded and lone, uh, what we call uh, bonding pairs and non-bonding pairs or lone pairs sa, uh, sa total. Now if you have four, so that means you need to have four hybrid orbitals that's made up of S orbital and 3P orbital. Okay? So you can have a tetrahedral, a trigonal pyramidal, or a pent, depending on the number of your lone pair. Now, paano kapag 5 na yung total number ng bonding pairs mo at non-bonding pairs? Ano yung hybridization natin? Saan tayo kukuha ng orbital kapag 5 na? D Anyone? Sa D. So, dyan na papasok yung sp3d. Okay? And usually, they are the one that has five orbitals to accommodate non-bonding pairs or bonding pairs that gives you a total of five. Now, kapag six, dadagdagan mo lang yung D orbital. Okay? Now, if you're going to summarize all of them, ito yung parang mangyayari sa kanya. So an S and a P, that's SP, SPP, that's SP2, SPPT, SP3, SPPTT, SP3D, and SPPDD, SP3D. Now let's go do on some module 3. Where we have the element carbon. So, paano natin i-express yung carbon sa sp3, sp2, and sp hybridization? So, we already discussed about sp3. Right? So, sa sp3, lahat mapropromote. Tapos lahat magpo-form ng bonding pair. Okay? Now, what happened? If one of the supposedly hybrid orbitals didn't participate like this one. Ang nag-participate lang sa hybridization e dalawang P orbitals at isang S. So you have her there an extra P orbitals. So hindi siya nag-participate. So since tatlong orbitals ang nag-participate, yung hybridization niya is sp2. Okay? And if you have an sp2 orbitals, what does it mean? That's the one that will overlap. Okay? 
So the sp2 orbitals, that's the one that will form what we call an overlapping with other orbitals. So what happened to the one that is unhybridized? So as you could see here, the unhybridized one, iba yung magiging interaction niya. It will still interact with another unhybridized orbital of the atom in a given molecule. Okay? And ang nangyayari dito is you have what we call sideways interaction compared to this one that has overlapping interaction. Now, the presence of an unhybridized uh, P orbital can lead to what we call multiple bond. So the presence of an hybridized P orbital means you have an additional bond that form. So instead of a single bond, pwede ka magkaroon ng double bond. Okay? So if you're going to look at this one like the ethylene, so this is what happened if you have the unhybridized orbital. So you see the overlapping there or sideways of the P orbital. So usually what you have is the formation of pi band. So sigma band, that's the one that formed due to overlapping of the orbital. Now the pi band, that's usually the one that form when you have sideways interaction. Now, if you're going to write this uh, compound, you write it like this. So each single bond here represent a sigma bond. Now, each double bond there represent a, a, a sigma bond and a pi bond. Okay? So kapag mayroon kang P orbital na hindi nag-hybridize, usually it results to one additional bond. So let's try. Okay? Or just to what we call introduce you. So when we're talking about sigma bond, that's the electron density between two atoms. And if we're talking about pi bond, that's the electron density above and below the flame of the nuclei of the bonding atom. Okay, so this is how this looks like. It's the pi bond. Kasi mayroon kang yung p orbitals na hindi na hybridized. Now, what if instead na isa yung hindi na hybridized, dalawang p bond? So you have here an sp orbital kasi dalawang orbital lang yung na-hybridize. Isang s, isang p. So, see the name here? So when you have sp, how many uh, orbitals are uh, hybridized? Hello? Two. So here it's three and here that's four. So that means if there's two orbitals there that hybridize, meron kang dalawang orbitals na hindi na hybridize. So ano mangyayari dyan? Magpo-form sila ng isang pi para sa pi na to at another pi doon sa isa pang pi. So kapag meron kang triple bond, may isa kang sigma at dalawang pi. So if you have an example here, like this one, just acetylene, it's just like this. And if you're going to look at the interaction there, so meron kang pi dito, tapos meron kang pi dito. Did you get that? So if you have a carbon with a triple bond, you have an SP. 
a carbon with a double bond, you have an sp2. A carbon with a single bond, you have a sp3. Clear? Okay, let's try here. So you have a triple bond there. So a triple bond here, if I ask you how many sigma, ilan yung sigma nyo? Sige nga. We have one here, another one here, another one here. So overall we have three sigma bond. Okay. How many pi bonds do we have? Anyone? Two. We have two. Kasi meron tayong triple bond. So let's try. So describe the bonding in CHO. So anong hybridization ng C at saka ng O? Ano ba sila? SP, SP2, SP3, SP3D. So you, you, you might ask yourself, Sir, paano mo namin malalaman yan? So you look at them. You count how many bonding pairs and how many non-bonding pairs they have. So for carbon, you have one, two, three. So, meron kang 3. So, alin dito yung magbibigay sa'yo ng 3? Hybrid orbitals in total. For yes. oxygen, meron kang 1, 2, dalawang lone pairs at isang bonding pairs. So, meron ka rin 3. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Ano yung hybridization ng carbon at oxygen sa atom na to? Pareho silang sp Two. 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 Okay. Now, if we're going to look at this a carbon dito, it has a three bonded atoms and zero lone pair, so it's sp2. Ganun din sa oxygen. Now, my question is, ilan sigma bonds meron dyan? Ilan five bonds meron dyan? Overall. Maari yung tanong na to eh on Thursday kasi true or false lang bibigyan ko ngayon. Tinga. Kung baga sa choices yan eh, A, B, C, parang 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2. Kailangan ko lang mag-replenish. Teka lang. Oh, ano? Ano sa god? A B C. Letter B po sir. Okay. So if you're going to count it, first one, two, three. So kita nyo one, two, three sigma. And then in addition to that, meron kang one pi. Claro? So, ang lagi nyo lang tandaan, kapag meron kang single bond, sigma lang yan. Kapag meron kang double bond, it's the sum of sigma and pi. Okay? Kapag meron kang triple bond, meron kang isang sigma, dalawang pi. Okay ba? 
Tignan natin to. Ilang sigma at 5 bang meron sa acetic acid? Nga. Type niyo sa chat kung may sagot na kayo. Okay. So to give you an idea, kailangan isulat niya yun. Structure. Okay. So based on this, we can count all the sigma in the single bond. So there's six of them. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then in a double bond, you have what? One sigma. So, meron kong seven sigma bond. And five bond, meron kong double bond. So, you have one. Okay? Question? So, sa BBT at hybridization yung na-cover dito. Okay? That's why, ano lang yan, uh, pareho lang doon sa module three. Okay. Tanong. Before we go with the MOT. And this is uh, the, the, the material that I have is similar to the one sa lecture ko. Sa recorded lecture. Okay. So, na-develop una yung valence band theory. And what happened, the valence bond theory cannot satisfactory account the properties of oxygen. Okay? So usually in oxygen, if you're going to look at this, wala siyang unpaired electron. Okay? However, kahit wala siyang unpaired electron, it was observed that it's paramagnetic because usually if you have no unpaired electron, it should be diamagnetic. But experimental results show oxygen to be paramagnetic. Okay, so all electrons are paired and it should be diamagnetic. So, but experimental uh, results show that it is paramagnetic. So they have to develop an alternative bonding uh, approach that. Uh, can explain this property. So they came up with the so-called molecular orbital theory. Okay? So in the molecular orbital theory, it says that the bonds are formed from the interaction of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals. So the way that you're going to look at this, meron kang isang atomic orbital mixed with another atomic orbital to form the molecular orbitals. So Whenever you mix two atomic orbitals, the molecular orbitals that are formed is the bonding 
molecular orbital and the antibonding molecular orbital. So the bonding molecular orbital, usually it is a constructive interference. It has lower energy and more stable than the atomic orbitals. On the other hand, the antibonding orbitals, it is a destructive interference. It has a higher energy and less stable compared to the atomic orbitals from which it was formed. Okay? So based on this, what we call bonding and antibonding, so if you have a bonding orbitals here, you have a constructive interference. So you just add the weight from the two orbitals that you mix. But in the antibonding, what happened? You, when you add them, you, 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 it's like a deduction or a subtraction that you have. That's why you call destructive interference. Okay. So based on this, you can also apply this in the 2p orbital. Okay. So whatever the number of atomic orbitals that you add, okay, you form the same number of the bonding and antibonding orbitals. So if you have this, you can have a constructive and a destructive okay, uh, interference. So yung may asterisk doon, yun yung tinatawag natin antibonding. Okay? So if you have this already, the p orbitals that you have, so this is still the bonding orbitals and this is the antibonding molecular orbitals just to make sure. Now, what does this mean? Okay. So if we're going to look at the molecular or uh, con uh, orbital configuration, you just follow the rules that we set in this slide. So the number of uh, molecular orbitals formed is always equals to the atomic orbital. So if it's 1s, okay, you form two uh, molecular orbital, one bonding and one antibonding molecular orbital. And the more stable is the anti uh, the bonding one is lower in energy and the less stable is the corresponding antibonding. Now, if you fill up the molecular orbitals, it fills from low to high energy. And just like the definition that we have in the orbital for the Pauli's exclusion principle, each molecular orbital can accommodate up to two electrons. And you use Hans rule when you add electrons to molecular orbit of the same energy. That means you uh, pair them, uh, what we call fill it up singly before you pair them. Okay? And from here, you can determine the number of all electrons in the molecular orbitals equals to the sum of all electrons on the bonding atoms. So what does it mean? We can have the so-called bond order. And bond order is just equals to if you have a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. Okay, so to get the bond order or to determine if you have a single, double, or triple bond, you just get one half on the difference of the electrons in the bonding molecular orbitals minus the number of electrons in anti bonding molecular orbitals. So for instance, this one, H2 plus. So if you're going to look at H2 plus, so this is what? Bonding minus anti-bonding. So one minus zero, one half of that is equals to one half. Hydrogen, H2. So that is what? One half of two minus zero. Where did I get the two? That's two, that's zero, that's one, that's zero. So I will have how many, or what's the bond order for hydrogen? Anyone? One. 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 So that if you say meron kang single bond. Now if you have HE2 plus, so you have a two here, you have a one here, so one half, two minus one. So you will have one half. And if you have here two and you have here two, so one half of two minus two will give you what? 
Anyone? Zero. What is the interpretation if your bond order is zero? Does not exist. Okay. It means that that molecule don't exist. Okay. So these are the C plus one, the one that's in the S orbital. So let's go to the one that caused this thing. What is that? The oxygen. Look at the oxygen. It has the unpaired electron. Remember, in the BBT, okay, they are paired, but they're paramagnetic. So by using MOT, they were able to show, hey, it is unpaired. So it should be paramagnetic. So that's the reason how they use MOT to solve this problem. Now, let's try to see if you get this number here. So how do you know the bonding and the antibonding? Usually the antibonding is the one that has the star. The bonding are the one that's not. Now here, in this what we call Li2, so it's just what? 2 minus 0. 1 half of 2 is equals to 1. Now here, I can cancel out this here. Why? They're just the same. Or if you insist, so I can have 2 here plus 2 here. So 2 plus 2 and then 2. So you end up with what? 4 minus 2. That's 2 times 1 half. That's 1. Now, nitrogen, which has triple bond. How do we do it? So we cancel this. So we end up with what? 6. And here, 0. So 1 half of 6. That is equal to what? Three. Now, paano kapag ang ginawa ko dito, instead of O2, gawin natin O2 minus. Ano yung mangyayari? Magdadagdag tayo ng electron or magbabawas? So, it, since it's a negative, we're going to add. So, we're going to add here. So, how what will happen now? So, we can cancel this out. So, you have 6 here. And you have what? 3. So, 6 minus 3. That's 3. Times 1 half. That's what? A bond order of 1.5. So, tanong. Na get you ba? Hello. Yung, yung page natin ngayon is just true or false. So, yung mga ganitong ano, buong pa Thursday. Kaya na? Yes. Dito malalaman kung meron kang double, single, or triple bond. So the idea here, the bonding orbitals, the electron in the bonding orbitals or bonding molecular orbitals minus the electron in anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So try to use this as guide. Paano nakakuha ng 2, 3, 2, 1. Okay? Question? Before we go with module three,
Metanol? So module three is more on organic chemistry. Ano ang ano niya sa organic chemistry definition? Anyone? Organic chemistry ba ibig sabihin carbon lang? Na? Hello. Pag organic chemistry ba, any ano lang, carbon ano lang, chemistry of carbon compound? Hello? So good. Pag organic chemistry ba, carbon compound lang? Ang CO2 ba? Organic ba siya or inorganic? CHO2 hmm. ba yan? Ha? CHO2. Okay, so usually kapag organic is carbon with hydrogen. Sometimes oxygen. You cannot say it's all carbon. Kasi CO2 is not organic. Okay? Carbon monoxide is not organic. Carbonates are not organic. And yet they are carbon-containing compounds. Okay? So, we're going to talk with the so-called functional group. So, functional group usually are a family of compounds that shows a characteristic group that gives a certain functional property. Okay? So, intro lang to sa inyo. The, the, the coverage is what? For Ano ano organ nyo? Organic chemistry nyo? 40? 43? 44? Ano yung... 40 ba? Yung iba? 43? May chemistry ba dito? Or agchem? Yung MST, anong organic nyo? Ha? Ah. Yung sa math and science teaching, anong organic nyo? Meron ba dito yung math and science teaching major? Hmm? Wala po. Wala? Wala po po organic. Okay. So usually, if you have what we call the functional group, ito yung parang... Uh, magbibigay ng property sa, sa isang compound. And this is usually represented by a certain structure. So if you have an alkane, that's a carbon with a hydrogen, with a single bond, whether with another carbon or a hydrogen. Now, kapag double bond na yun, meron kang alkane. Alkane. Kapag triple bond, meron kang alkyne. Now, kapag meron kang benzene ring, you have the aromatic ring. Now, if your carbon is attached to any of the halide, you can call halo alkane or arcyl halides. I, I'm going to have an example for each of these. Now, if you have an OH or hydroxyl group attached to carbon, you have what we call the al alcohol. Okay. Now, if an oxygen is between two carbon, you have an ether. Amine nitrogen that is attached to carbon. And then if you have this so-called carbonyl group, okay, when the carbonyl group, C double bond O with a carbon here, if it's a hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. If it's another carbon, it's a ketone. Now, if it's 
an hydroxyl group that replaced the carbon attached to hydroxyl at the carbon uh, carbonyl group that is a carboxylic acid now if it's not a hydrogen but instead a carbon you have an ester now if it's a nitrogen you have an amide and if it's a c triple bond n you have a nitrile or cyano group right so i'm just going to show you some example and the main thing that you will have there is you should be able to say what functional group does a given molecule has because they can have you can have more than one functional group in a given molecule as you will see in the example so alkanes hindi ko na ilagay dito but alkanes are what we call the single bond okay an example of that is butane propane or yung tinatawag nating gas doon sa gasol natin diyan right Are you familiar with your gasol? It's called na marsh gas. What is that marsh gas? Anyone? What do you call the marsh gas? Ano compound yung marsh gas? Anyone? Hindi niyo alam? Any marsh gas natin? Yun yung methane. Okay? Now, if you have a double bond like this, yun yung alkene. An example of a double bond is an ethene or a propene. So, ethene is a major industrial feedstock. Ganun din yung propene. Okay, ginagamit sa polypropylene. So, whenever you see a double bond, that's already an alkene, like the beta phenine or the acid alarm pheromone. Now, kapag triple bond sila, kagaya dun sa acetylene, yan yung tinatawag nating alkyne. So, acetylene that you use in welding torch. Okay. Now, another example that we have here like this, the capillin, it is an uh, antifungal agent. And then the ductilin, that's a marine natural product. And this one that you use uh, as your contraceptive, ethyl estradiol, they all have an alkyne. So sometimes the terminal alkyne, okay? So this is a terminal alkyne. This is another type of alkyne. And then when you ever have this, what we call the ring, we tawag that in to a benzene or the so-called aromatic ring. Why do we call it aromatic ring? Anyone? If you have an aromatic ring, what is main characteristic? Come on. Aroma. Smell. Smell. Are you familiar with rugby? And in yes. compound, na nagkakos sa smell ng rugby? Yung atawag natin yung mga mahilig sa rugby, yung solvent boys. Di ba? So ano yun? Anyone? Just toluene. And toluene is just what? A methyl group in a ring. So among the compound that has uh, what we call aromatic ring, ibuprofen, okay, penicillin, morphine, lysergic acid, and acetyl salicylic acid. So this is aspirin. Okay. Kita nyo lang yung tinatawag nating benzene ring and you can say it's aromatic compound. Now, alkyl halide, that's usually uh, a halogen that is attached to a carbon. Parang alkane sila, pero ni-replace mo yung hydrogen ng fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So, if the fluorine is attached to carbon, 
okay, with two hydrogen. That's a primary. With one hydrogen, that's a secondary. And with no hydrogen, that's a tertiary alkyl halide. So meron yung primary, secondary, tertiary, the way that you're going to look at is this one. So two hydrogen, that means primary. One hydrogen, secondary, no hydrogen, carbon attached to another carbon, that's tertiary. If you're going to look at it, maybe like this. That one. Yeah. Primary, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary. Alcohol. Sabi nila, if you get stuck in an island, if you have alcohol, you can synthesize other compounds or the other functional group. Not because it will make you happy if you get stuck there. Okay? But it's a good precursor or starting material to produce or to synthesize other functional groups. So again, you can have a primary, secondary, and a tertiary alcohol depending on the number of hydrogen attached to the carbon. So pwedeng ito or ito or ito. Primary, secondary, tertiary. So this is what? That's a secondary alcohol. And this one, a secondary alcohol. Okay, so if you make it like this one here, that's already a tertiary alcohol. So you have ethanol, which is primary, adrenaline, secondary, pseudopetrine, secondary, cholesterol, which is what? One, two, three. So that's a secondary and glycerol, which for this, this is primary and this is secondary. So you can find alcohol in morphine. So saan ang alcohol dito? Ito, tsaka ito. And this one is what? Another functional group. This one is another functional group. This one is another functional group. And this one is the aromatic ring. So as you could see, a compound can have more than one functional group. So again, you have the designer drugs, morphine, codeine, oxycodone, and heroin. Now, eaters. Eaters are oxygen attached to one carbon and another carbon. So like dimethyl ether, Epoxide or ethylene oxide and tetrahydrofuran. Meron silang distinct smell, yung ether. That's not good. Okay? Yung amines. So you can have a primary, secondary, and tertiary amines. What, what physical property you can associate with amine? Anyone? Anyone? Based on your personal experience? Based on your personal experience, the amines are the one that you can find in your waste product. They're the one responsible why it smells so bad. Okay? I hope you get what I mean, right? Now, aldehydes and ketones. So you have here the carbonyl group, C double bond O. So hybridization of carbon here, anyone? SP what? Hello? The hybridization of carbon here is sp2. Okay, so if you have a carbonyl group, 
if your carbonyl is attached to one carbon and one hydrogen, that's an aldehyde. If both of them are carbon, that's what we call the ketone. Okay, so we have testosterone. This is the ketone. Androstenodione, that's a ketone. Okay. And then you can have the hydroxy, the carboxylic acid. So you have here what? So instead of a carbon or a hydrogen, you replace it with hydroxyl group. So good example of carboxylic acid is your acetic acid. So kapag carboxylic acid, ang sama ng amoy nila. Pero kapag ester, so you replace the hydrogen there with a carbon group, ang sa ang 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 bango ng amoy nila. Are you familiar with the vanilla flavor? Or banana flavor? Alam nyo ba yung amoy nun? Usually, they are esters. Okay? So, if you have acetyl salicylic acid, that's a carboxylic group. Ibuprofen, that's a carboxylic group. And then, if you have a palmitic acid or fatty acid, that's also a carboxylic group. Okay, lysergic acid, there's a carboxylic group here. And for this one, okay, wala ata, wala dito, okay, that's a ketone, but for the aspartame, this is what you have here, that's an ester. This is a carboxyl group. Okay. So kapag amide naman, instead na hydrogen, uh, carbon, or oxygen, you use nitrogen. Okay, And then the nitrile are the carbon triple bond nitrogen. So ano to? Anong functional group to? Anyone? Yung assignment ninyo, bibigyan kayo ng compound. And then you have to answer what's the functional group in that compound. So what functional group here? Anyone? This is carboxylic group. Oh, no, it's not. That's your ester because that's another carbon. This one is a ketone, an alcohol, an, an ether. Carboxyl group, no, this is another ester, aromatic ring. This is an amine, oh no, no, wala. Na click ko. Yun na yung last slide eh. So this is what? Another ester, alcohol, okay? And this one is an amine, aromatic ring, an alkane, an alkene. So that's the thing that you need to know. So question. Before I open the quiz, it's just a five minute quiz. Hello? Metano? So what? Until one o'clock or one thirty? It's just a true or false question. Five minutes. I put it at one thirty. So I'm going to open it now.
question? So I opened it until 1.30. Do you see it now? So we will not meet on Thursday, but you will have a long quiz covering chapter, module two, and then some sort of assignment covering module three. Okay.